Flyboard Inc. Today we're going to be doing a demonstration on how to properly use the flyboard. Uh, first thing first is going to be the required gear to use your flyboard. And uh, we're going to start off with the isothermal pants. Now you don't have to have an entire wetsuit. Well, we do recommend just the shorts, but that's up to the user. The next thing being is going to be a Coast Guard approved life jacket. Uh, it must be Coast Guard approved, flotation vest, and uh, we recommend some that zip up and also clip for extra support. You can use wakeboard helmets, but whatever helmet you choose to use, it should have something that will cover your ears. If it doesn't cover your ears, we recommend that you use full ear earplugs. First thing you want to do getting into the flyboard is place your left foot on the center of the board, and you're going to follow that, putting your right foot into the right binding. Once your right foot's securely in there, go ahead and place your left foot in the left binding, and then you're going to tighten the straps. Starting with the top strap first, and then you're going to do the bottom pull ties. You're going to want to have your bindings as tight as possible to make sure your feet don't come loose and to prevent any kind of accident or injury that could be caused by the user not having the bindings on properly. Once you have the bindings nice and tight, you're going to secure the loops onto the top of the binding and the holes provided for you. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and get into the arms and start out with your left arm and uh, we recommend that you leave the velcro half strap like you see that way you can slide your arms in with ease and then you're just going to tighten up the straps over your arms you want these nice and tight as they don't move for when you're going through the water you can go ahead and put on the right arm and pull all the straps so they're nice and snug you don't want to have the arms too tight to where you lose any kind of feeling in your wrist or hands but you do want them snug enough to where they're not going to move around much once you have your feet properly in the bindings and your arms are in you got your isothermal pants on, your life jacket, and your helmet. You're ready to flyboard. Okay, this is the platform we've built here. Uh, whether you choose to build your own platform or launch off a beach or off a dock, we do recommend you are sitting down in the water before you launch. It's essential that your platform be thick enough that it covers from the bottom of your flyboard to at least the middle of your gyro. This will prevent the gyro from snagging on your platform, which could cause serious injury or drowning. All right, so once you're all strapped into the flyboard, First thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and stand up and you're going to jump feet first into the water. Now once you're in the water, the operator on the jet ski can go ahead and start the jet ski. You'll feel the hose start, start to stiffen up and he's going to be propelled out outwards. Now it's very important that he keeps his legs straight, his back arched and his head out of the water. Once, you, once your hose is completely straight and you feel that extra power, you're going to want to keep your legs straight, pull your legs under you, pull your toes up and that's going to let you come right out of the water, as you see. Now, in controlling yourself out of the water, it's all going to be in your toes. You lightly point, point your toes forward, you'll move forward. You point your toes up, and you'll proceed upwards. It's essential that you keep your legs straight while flying. The only time you're going to bend your legs is when you're turning. If you want to make a right turn, you'll slightly bend your left knee. If you want to make a left turn, you'll slightly bend your right knee. While you gain your balance on the flyboard, you want to do S-turns. Uh, slowly turning to the left and also slowly turning to the right. This will teach the user how to properly navigate the flyboard. The next maneuver we'll go over is going to be the 360. The 360 is very important because it can help you get out of potential crashes and it will also teach you how to properly do tricks without damaging your equipment. When doing the 360, you want to make sure you're doing a real 360 on top of the gyro, not just doing a 360 loop over the hose. Uh, another thing you're going to want to learn is how to do a 180 and ride backwards. Learning how to ride backwards will keep you out of many potential falls and will also help you learn how to do more advanced tricks. When you're riding backwards, you want to have your toes pulled up, but you want to have all your weight leaning forwards. This is going to properly position your weight on the flyboard to keep you stable and balanced while flying backwards, as you see. All right, when you first start learning the flyboard, in the very beginning, you don't want to take the user higher than five feet. It's very important that the PwC operator never give the flyboard user more than 4,500 RPMs. 4,500 RPMs is enough to get the average sized person up and out of the water. Uh, it's very important you keep them at about five feet off the water until they're comfortable and they've gained their balance. Once they fully gain their balance, they're comfortable, then you can begin to take the rider to new heights. It's important when the flyboard user falls into the water, that they do not panic and they understand their head could be underwater for up to two seconds. The board floats, the life jacket floats, and also the helmet floats. 
but you could still be underwater for up to two seconds. When attached to the flyboard, you never want to try to swim or struggle. You want to lay flat and let the PWC flyboard and flotation devices do their work. All right, it's very important that the PWC operator understand the proper times when to lower or drop the flyboard user. The flyboard user comes within 15 feet. It is important for the PWC driver to drop the flyboard user as you just saw. Now, if the flyboard user comes within six feet, it's no longer safe for the flyboard user to be dropped. At this point, the PWC driver should slowly lower the flyboard user. It's very important that the operator of the jet ski cut the flyboard user if they enter the water and are underwater for more than two seconds. If the flyboard user is underwater for longer than two seconds and the jet ski has already been cut off, it is very important that the jet ski operator dive in the water and follow the hose straight down to the flyboard user to make sure everything is okay and they're not stuck on anything on the bottom. It's very important that the flyboard user never directs the jet propulsion at the PWC driver or anyone else in close proximity.